Hey, welcome everyone. We've uh, been a while since we've done a, a free YouTube video. We've been busy with JPerson Asset Management, another nice, great up month uh, outperforming the markets here. A lot of the things we use are not just our scans, uh, both Thinkorswim, TradeStation, HGSI, uh, but also our algo optimizer programs. And I'll go through that in just a minute. Some of the stuff that you see on the screen right now some trades that we're looking for breakouts, and I'll just point those out to you. First and foremost, uh, we have a small position in Entergy at a lower level. It's giving back uh, some of the profits were long from a little bit lower, and we were looking to add to this trade on a dip. It's dipping, so I'm not sure we're going to add to it right now. We did pick up a little bit of a position here in Exxon, and uh, the, one of the main reasons isn't just because of the dividend yield that it provides, but August traditionally we see some of the oil and, and gas exploration uh, sector move higher. And so with the crude oil trading around 43 today and the crack spread, something a lot of people don't talk about. Um, what is the crack spread? It's the differentials between the price between reformulated blend gas and heating oil, AKA diesel fuel. So heating oil is like a derivative of diesel fuel. So we're shipping a lot of stuff by FedEx, by UPS, by semis. We are still moving. Commerce is occurring. So if you're not sure about that, just look at an Amazon truck driving around. So gasoline, while we uh, traditionally see heavier driving in, and vacation in the month of August under COVID-19, uh, that, that's a little bit different story. Another bump that uh, crude oil had was maybe the potential explosion. They haven't figured out what happened in Beirut in Lebanon. Really sad story over there. I mean, we think of us older folks think of Beirut as worn torn city and actually there's some very nice sections still in Beirut and um, our, our thoughts and prayers go out to the, the folks there because it was a horrific explosion if you've seen the videos but anyway um, with that stated I, I think there is a shot that we get an upside out of Exxon uh, Clovis this is a trade we bought over here in Clovis uh, and we've got our stops trailed right now. Just, it's hard to see it, but that little green line right there is underneath the daily pivot and a John Person last conditional change. So we're just trailing the stop on Clovis. GDXJ, we have a long stock and a short call against it. Uh, Micron Technology, we were long this stock looking for the breakout. And, you know, the whole sector is kind of melting down right now. And this morning I said, just get out of it. And it wasn't providing anything. And, and, and you know what? Sometimes we get out of stocks a little too early. Uh, this is one that we've been in for a while. It hasn't seen the performance. It's trailed its sector, meaning Amazon, uh, excuse me, AMD, NVIDIA, uh, other names have had follow through strength. Micron just hasn't moved anywhere. So I, I'm tend to one that after a given period of time, I don't see performance in a trade. I tend to get out and look for something else. Meanwhile, we have Altria uh, MO as a symbol. We're looking for a breakout there to get in on this and or to add to that trade. We are in this trade on the downside. One of the reasons we want to add to that is another, uh, you know, this is a, just a, one of those stocks that anyone's concerned about uh, the markets going forward, uh, the economy, the disconnect between Wall Street, Main Street theory, uh, can we continue to see stocks like Square, PayPal, uh, Wayfair, all these momentum names continue to go up without other names joining the ranks of the, the rally? My take is anything that pays an 8% uh, coupon dividend yield uh, at, at these near their 52-week, near, I said 52-week lows, is one that uh, to me is we're, we're focused on. Discover Financial in the credit card uh, sector, if we get any type of a breakout, the green line here on the screen, all these green lines are hand drawn in. These are our breakout points. This was resistance that we had on the Dow. It just gapped above both lines in the sand. S&Ps are right at their resistance line. All right, so that's just a wrap up of what we're doing and, and, and what, what other positions we're looking at. Walgreens needs to break out and close above this green line. It's been just probing and probing and probing and probing and won't do it. But boy, there's some really uh, mitigating circumstances around this trade. For one, using Thinkorswim, you can see uh, as I tighten up the screen and the pricing, the on balance volume tool Oops, sorry about that. The on-balance volume tool is showing there's strong accumulation in, in Walgreens here. Uh, here's the deal. The uh, relative strength, and you'll get this on the screen. Here we go. 
the PMC is showing a strong convergence pattern. It's starting to show performance relative to the overall market is getting a, a little stronger. And there is volume accumulation. We can see the OBV trending higher while price is not broken out. If we can get a daily close greater than that line in the sand that we've got up in the trading room, we're looking for a retest of the 47 and a half high. We just haven't gotten there yet. So it's just stalled money, so to speak. So we're just stalking this one. We do have a PPS buy on an uptick in volume with improved relative strength. I like all those functions. All right, next, let's move on. What about going forward? What are we looking at this market? So let's go over and take a look at our algo room. As you can see, one of our members had pointed out the algo room has just, just absolutely killed it. And uh, we have a couple strategies that we have. We have two live trading rooms, one with the stocks that we do in the main trading room and one that we have in the, uh, for our algo community. And so let me get that up for us right now. All right, very nice. Here's our algo room, and we just had a long, this is SPXL, and you see what it says, compression stop. The blue line connects the dot from the long entry over here and it just exited the trade here today, Wednesday. This is a short VXX. It was short the VXX, and almost at the same time, it covered it short. What does that mean? Well, a lot of people have been betting that this market can't go up, and they've been getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And our contention is we follow a tried and true formula based on our indicators. And if one of the rules that I like to, to point out is when a trading strategy system is doing one thing, and you're... You're, you're betting with your heart saying it's going to do something else. Follow the algos. So when the volatility is going down, that's kind of bullish for the equity market overall. And when the strategy is actually long the market, you don't want to be short. But now we've just exited th those two trades and the market is now in a position it's vulnerable for a pullback. So what we're looking for is by Friday, uh, the first put in uh, like about the first five days of the month, we'd be looking for to see if the market trades back down and get, generates some sell signals. So we've got some circumstances uh, building in the marketplace and I'll share with you our, the advanced decline and what's developing here. Let me bring this screen into focus because this is the stuff that we uh, cover in our live trading room. We go from a top down approach. First and foremost, we do have a new high in the market in the S&Ps. However, the advanced decline hasn't confirmed that high. We have a modified McClellan oscillator that is below specific highs. That's also developing a slight divergence within the advanced decline. All right, next, here's the NASDAQ 100 making newer highs. The advanced decline not confirming it. Volume readings, by the way, are weakening. So there's a divergence scenario developing. All right, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, thanks in part to Disney, uh, Boeing recovering, uh, Apple not falling off, and Microsoft not falling off. We're starting to see Dow Jones Industrial Average respect this little buy signal. However, what is not confirming this breakout is the advanced decline on the Dow 30 stocks. This is some of the work that we do. This is exclusive to the work that I created back in 2009. No, we don't have the availability on TradeStation, on Thinkorswim. I developed this on TradeStation and Trade Navigator. Uh, 11 years ago. I'm not trading the NYSE and a lot of people look at the breadth on the NYSE and I'm not trading the NASDAQ composite so I don't look at either the tick or the trend and I know a lot of people do and that's better than nothing but to be more accurate I want to look at the individual uh, conditions of the advanced decline the stocks within those respected indices and right now you can see that we also have kind of a rise a rising uptick in the Russell and uh, we haven't seen a confirmation with the advanced decline breaking out to new highs there. So we are right now under uh, questionable conditions of the market. We are also at a uh, prospected resistance of person's pivots in the market. Here's another one in the spiders right there. As you can see, I'm drawing the red line. That uh, I didn't put that line in. That's the advanced, uh, excuse me, that's the uh, pivot resistance in the marketplace up there. And so what I like to see is, okay, the market, what is the condition of this rally? I mean, I don't like just sell just to sell. That doesn't make sense. And, and I think that when we're looking at our models, now this is a class we did. You probably saw the email. This was our summer school models. 
And uh, quite frankly, it's long the Russell right now. It uh, is in a buy mode on XBI. It's, uh, it's done pretty well. These models have done extremely well in time. And uh, right now, uh, I'm looking at, at some divergence patterns moving forward. If we take a look at uh, the uh, overall uh, board, and this is the board I like to look at. This is what we created with uh, TradeStation. And let me just share with you what's going on. Uh, utilities are down a little bit today. Okay, fine, not a big deal. How bad are they getting uh, uh, jammed? Well, they're not, they didn't really go anywhere. They've been not moving anywhere because all the money wants to be in NASDAQ. All the money wants to be in uh, technology and social media. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, FANGs, COVID-19, Wayfair, those things, right? Eventually, that is going to dry up and you're going to see rotation. And I'm starting to see that right now. How and why? Well, one tool that we have is called the person's market catcher, the PMC indicator. And that can be found on a lot of different platforms, including Thinkorswim. But we line it up here. And just to share with you, the stuff that was strong, like the NASDAQ, the Qs, relative to the S&Ps, it's starting to weaken. Look, it's red. Red shows it's actually lagging behind the S&P. That's pretty bizarre because you would think that the NASDAQ was outperforming. But relative to the S&Ps, it's forming a what we call divergence. The market rallied to a new somewhat higher high. It just took out the prior bars high in time. Last July's high, August, we've taken out the high. The relative strength is weakened and there's no real strong volume behind this. This is a divergence pattern. The last time we saw a divergence pattern, I'm not saying that we're going to get a sell-off like we did in February. Uh, however, we are in a divergence situation that raises the red flag. The fact that the volatility VXX covered a short, the fact that the SPXL model uh, liquidated its long, and now we have a model in the live trading room that we created that we're waiting for a signal and I think you'll see it right here. It's called SQQQ. Note that the SQQQ, we've made a new lower low. My volume indicator did not confirm that. In other words, it's not showing that the trend is sustainable to the downside. What is SQQQ? Inverse ETF to the NASDAQ, to the Qs. When the Qs go up, this goes down. When the Qs go down, this goes up. We're waiting for a buy signal and an algo strategy uh, to enact not just a long position in the SQQQ, but possibly potentially converting that to put options in the QQQ. So we'll update you. But right now we're under divergence scenario. It's probably eminent any day. We want to pay attention to that. And that's what we're waiting for the trigger. Can you jump ahead on this? Sure, but that doesn't mean that you're going to make money. It means that you want to wait for the trigger and then act and then put the odds on your side. That's what I'm seeing as we're setting up for the month of August. Traditionally, a very volatile month because of light liquidation. We, If we get the, and maybe this is a buy the rumor, sell the fact with the stimulus package, the unemployment. But after this, Washington goes on vacation and there's not much left as far as earnings. There's no major news driven events that's going to create the market to move up. We'll be focused on the presidential election. We'll be focused on the maybe Democrat vice president running mate. We'll be focused on taking a break in the market. So that's going to cause a little bit of volatility and unwinding of long stock positions that have had hell of a move in here. So that rotation is what we're looking for. And we're going to follow these algo optimized programs. If you're interested in what we do around here, I'll tell you what, go to PersonsPlanet.com. Sign up for a free trial to our live trading room. Hang out for a little while. Get a feel for what we do. And I think you'll follow tried and true trading programs and signals based on algos that we've created on my work. Thanks for listening. Hopefully you found this information helpful as to what are the tools that I use, how I implement them, and how we use it not just for our own trades in our asset management accounts, but also for our live trading community. Thanks for listening. And good luck to you out there. It's going to be rough this month, I think.